And it's my really great pleasure to introduce this celebration of 50 years since Rose Heilbronn first sat as a judge at the Old Bailey. She was the first woman to do so, as you noted. And it's quite remarkable sitting in January 2022 to appreciate the cultural and professional obstacles that inhibited the progress of women in the legal profession in general, uh, even after the legal disqualification for practice was lifted. Uh, th this evening, as you've indicated, is part of the next 100 years project with its focus in particular on the next 10 years um, with the invaluable work of Spark 21. And on behalf of all of those who've joined this evening, can I thank you and Spark 21 for all the work that you're doing. I've spoken frequently about the importance of increasing greater and achieving greater diversity in the judiciary and also in the legal profession. And tonight perhaps is not the occasion to rehearse the reasons why it's so important that collectively we do so, and because all those attending will know them all too well. But diversity and particularly gender diversity has been very much in my mind this week, not only because of tonight's celebration of Rose Heilbronn's 50 year milestone, but also um, because earlier this week, Mary Arden retired from the Supreme Court. Lady Arden, um, as I think many people know, like Rose Heilbronn, um, is a daughter of Liverpool. And she was called to the bar in 1971. And so there's a, a, a happy synchronous um, coincidence uh, in, in comparing the lives of two very distinguished women judges. When she was called in 1971, uh, as she has explained, including at her valedictory, there were still many obstacles in the way of women practicing at the bar. And she went to the Chancery Bar, which was then an entirely male domain. So the removal of legal dis disqualification in 1919 was really only the start of the progress through the professions of, and into the judiciary of women. As everyone knows, it was painfully slow. And although it has accelerated in recent years, there's still a good way to go. And the, the, the early opposition to the removal of the legal disqualification seems to me to have re represented a rather deep-seated cultural difficulty of men in particular coming to terms with the fact that women are just as capable as men at everything. I, I think I can sense many of you thinking, and perhaps better. But the lack of enthusiasm amongst many for allowing women to practice at the bar and as solicitors, reflected at precisely the same time, a real resistance to equal suffrage, not only in the United Kingdom, but over the world. And for those of you who have time or the inclination, dig out some of the parliamentary debates on women's suffrage before the First World War and leading up to the uh, introduction of women's suffrage. Remember, even then there were differences between the men who were allowed to vote and, and, and the women. And giants of the day were deeply opposed to it. Um, Herbert Asquith, for example, was one. And so too, at, at least before the First World War, was uh, Winston Churchill. And uh, I was reflecting recently, given 50 years is being celebrated here tonight, that last year, Switzerland celebrated 50 years of women having the vote. They only got it in 1971. So it tells you a lot about 
how things were and how things have changed and continue to change. But we know that the removal of disqualification didn't immediately open the door to women to be able to practice freely in the law on either side of the professions. I, I think Rose Heilbronn can truly be described as a trailblazer. I'm afraid I didn't have the opportunity of appearing in front of her when she was a judge, although I was in practice, as you've indicated, for a few years before she retired. But all I can say from what I've read and learned is what a remarkable woman she must have been. Uh, others will tell you much more. Uh, but at this stage, perhaps all, all I need say is that she entered a male world at a time when there were very few women practitioners at the bar. Uh, very quickly, she developed an enormous practice and was recognized as being one of the outstanding practitioners of her time. She took silk in 1949 when she was only 34 years old. Now there have been a handful of other people in history who've taken silk that young, but it really is no more than a handful. And I think for a woman to do it in 1949 um, is itself something that demonstrates the quite remarkable and outstanding ability of, of Rose Heilbronn. And then, as I think all of you know, she was one of the leading criminal and indeed civil practitioners of her day. You're going to hear much more about her, and I, I'm conscious that um, Hilary Heilbronn, her daughter, and Sir Christopher Rose will be having a discussion in a few minutes and uh, can speak from uh, personal experience. But glancing at some of the materials ready, readily available, it's obvious that she became something of a, a media personality as well as a, a legal personality. And obviously that may in part have been as a result of how unusual it was to have a stellar female silk. But the reality is that she was doing many of the biggest and most difficult cases of her day. And as is obvious to everybody then as now, doing them quite uh, remarkably well. I know Hillary's written a, a biography of her mother, um, which tells us so much about the realities of trying to practice in those days. And there was one, one, one vignette, which I hope I've got accurately, I'm sure I'll be contradicted if I haven't, that um, even though she was one of the leading practitioners on the Northern Circuit, she wasn't able to attend bar messes because they didn't allow women to attend. I mean, if that's right, it speaks volumes, doesn't it, for how slowly the legal profession accepted the cultural changes that, that should have come immediately with women joining the ranks. But she is um, not only remembered as a remarkable judge and a remarkable uh, advocate, but we, we still have the benefit of um, screen versions, or at least uh, a screen version uh, based upon her work, um, available to be viewed. Uh, before my time even, I'm afraid, as a, as, 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 as a child, um, Margaret Lockwood uh, appeared in uh, a program, a, a drama called Justice in Women, I think in 1969, and then it led to a TV series called Justice. And I'm aware of it only because it's showing at the moment on um, a program that show, shows old TV series called Talking Pictures, Channel 91, for those of you who, who are interested. Uh, and I've picked up one or two of the episodes lately. So the drama and the reality can come together this evening. Now, I suspect that the Old Bailey that Rose Heilbronn encountered in 1972 was very different from how it is now. You've mentioned that there's gender balance at the Old Bailey and hooray for that. 
I, I think you will be hearing from a number of people who will be able to chart some of the intervening years, and certainly the panel at the end will be able to uh, explain to you how things are today. But in, in all walks of life, and particularly in, in, in our profession, there are occasionally some people who genuinely can be described as giants and as trailblazers, and Rose Heilbronn was undoubtedly one of them. And I hope in the next few minutes we'll hear Hilary and Christopher uh, talk about her from their knowledge and we'll learn more. Thank you.